the largest nuclear explosions in history. Seven years after dropping atomic weapons over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the United States detonated the world's first thermonuclear weapon, the hydrogen bomb, on November 1, 1952. The test occurred on any Weetok Atoll in the Pacific, and the device, codenamed Ivy Mike, yielded an explosion equivalent to the destructive power of 10.4 megatons of TNT. It was 1,000 times more powerful than conventional nuclear devices of the time. Edward Teller, a physicist and ardent supporter of the development of the hydrogen bomb, was able to detect the detonation 5,000 miles away, in Berkeley, California, by observing a seismometer which detected the blast shock waves moving through the Earth. Codenamed Castle Bravo, the United States' first test of a dry fuel hydrogen bomb took place on March 1, 1954. Detonated at Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands, Castle Bravo is the most powerful nuclear device ever tested by the United States, with a yield of 15 megatons of TNT. The explosion, far larger than the expected yield of 4 to 8 megatons, coupled with shifting winds, resulted in widespread radioactive contamination of the area and adverse conditions for the native people who live there. The 1957 novel On the Beach was inspired by the Castle Bravo test and depicted a world dying of radiation after an atomic war. Just one month later, on March 27, 1954, the United States continued their Operation Castle nuclear tests with Castle Romeo, the first test of the TX-17 thermonuclear weapon. Castle Romeo, also detonated at Bikini Atoll, was a weaponized dry fusion bomb that again exceeded original expectations for total explosive yield. Romeo was the first nuclear test conducted on a barge, which was necessary because the explosions were blowing vast holes in the natural reefs of the islands. Originally expected to produce a yield of 4 megatons, Castle Romeo was the third largest test ever detonated by the United States, producing a blast of 11 megatons. That same year, Castle Yankee was the codename given to a test weapon detonated at Bikini Atoll on May 5, 1954. The Runt 2 nuclear device used partially enriched lithium fuel for the fusion stage and yielded a 13.5 megaton blast. The yield was still greater than predicted, due to the enriched fuel and fast fission of the natural uranium tamper within the device. Ending a two-year moratorium on nuclear testing between the United States and Soviet Union, the Soviet Union conducted its largest and most intensive battery of nuclear tests ever in 1961. On October 23, 1961, in the Novaya Zemlya area of the Western Arctic, a weapon producing 12.5 megatons was detonated in test number 123. Novaya Zemlya is a pair of islands between the Barents Sea and the Kara Sea that measure 32,000 square miles in area, or about the size of the state of South Carolina. Many thermonuclear tests during this period were conducted on or around these islands, the largest of which occurred on October 30, 1961. The Sar Boma was the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created by mankind and yielded a 50 megaton blast. That's over 1,350 times more powerful than the combined energy of the bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Tsar Bomba was so big that it required a specially modified Tu-95V bomber to carry it, and the device was outfitted with a parachute to slow its descent long enough to prevent the release and observer planes from being destroyed in the blast. The explosion was so devastating that its shockwave damaged windows over 550 miles away, and the flash was so bright that it could be seen from more than 620 miles away. The following year, on August 5, 1962, another incredibly large Soviet thermonuclear test delivered a blast of 21.1 megatons. Test number 147 was an airdrop test that detonated 11,800 feet above sea level at the Novaya Zemlya test location. That's seven times as high as the Willis Tower in Chicago. On September 25th and 27th of 1962, two hydrogen weapons were tested yielding 19.1 and 20 megaton blasts, respectively. Again tested at Novaya Zemlya, tests number 173 and 174 were airdropped and detonated at an altitude of about 13,000 feet. Just weeks after these tests, the United States would discover the presence of nuclear-armed Soviet missiles in Cuba, just 90 miles off the coast of Florida. This sparked the 13-day military standoff and naval blockade known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. In the interest of international peace and security, all concerned should refrain from any action which may aggravate the situation and bring with it the risk of war. 
nuclear catastrophe was narrowly avoided when Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev offered to remove the missiles from Cuba in exchange for the U.S. promising not to invade the island and removing their nuclear weapons from strategic locations in Turkey. The second largest nuclear test in history, also conducted by the Soviets, took place on Christmas Eve, 1962. It was a thermonuclear fusion bomb delivered via an Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. It yielded 24.2 megatons and had a destruction radius of about six miles, or about a quarter of the size of Los Angeles. Test number 219 was one of the last atmospheric nuclear tests conducted by the Soviet Union. Less than a year later, on August 5, 1963, the governments of the Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and United States signed the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. This prohibited all test detonations of nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, outer space, or underwater, and was designed to slow the arms race and stop the excessive release of nuclear fallout into the Earth's atmosphere. Underground tests were still permitted under the treaty and continued until September 10, 1996, when the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly. The only countries not to have signed the treaty are India, Pakistan, and North Korea. To date, the nuclear powers have detonated 2,475 devices in over 2,000 nuclear tests. 1,054 of those tests were conducted by the United States.